way to create an exhibition of the situation it is you have to take the notion into your own heart and redesign it accordingly with your own soul. From now on to board said, the art of the future will be the creation of situations or nothing. The situation is they wanted they wanted to devaluate everything which was a part of the modern society and for sure for them art market, art dealing with art, was something that should be ruined. They want to not only negate art, but as the, in the way Debord put it, also realize it, which is to say, make of daily life a creative, continuously original, delirious, ecstatic experience. Situationist International was an artistic and political movement active in Europe from 1957 through 1972. Situationists were those post-war bohemians we imagine living in continental cafes, who like the surrealists before them and Baudelaire's plein air, wandered through the Parisian streets and stumbled upon spontaneous, continuous, ever-changing experience. Concerned with the increasing commercialization of the art world, the commodification of goods, and the apathy of modern urban life, the Situationists placed their faith in youthful revolt and agitation. The Situationist International was formed in 1957 at Cosio di Orosia, a small picturesque town in northern Italy, out of the remains of a number of avant-garde groups. The principal members of the Situationist International were artists and writers, the French theorist and filmmaker Guy Debord, who had led the Lettrist International, and the former Cobra artists, Oscar Jorn from Denmark, and Constant from Holland. The Italian painter Giuseppe Pino Galizio had been part of the movement for an imaginist Bauhaus. Perceiving that alienation in society was a result of the domination of the individual by the mass media and consumerism, the Situationist International did not proclaim itself as a political movement, but was interested in the construction of moments of life and in replacing passivity and doubt with playful affirmation. The word Situationist denoted activity that aimed at making situations. What could be transformed into a situation? It could be an epic or a moment of an individual's life. From 1957 through 1972, they published journals and books, held exhibitions, made films, sprawled graffiti on city walls, subverted and created comics, and helped detonate the student revolts of May 1968 in Paris. The members of the Situationist International were aesthetic and political renegades who wanted nothing less than to change the world. The Letters International and after them the Situationists had two techniques that they believed were keys to changing the world. These were very tiny, almost paltry techniques. One was the derive, which means the drift. And that meant people wandering through cities, being simply pulled by the attractions that you could find in a city, or repulsed by things that were ugly and hateful. Simply letting the, the city itself, its streets, its buildings, its ambiance, its mini climates, guide you, draw you down, making you see the city that you lived in in an utterly new way. This was a way of discovering utopia, of discovering what you hated, what you loved. Another technique was the tournament, which was cut up, 
which was collage, which was juxtaposition, which was the refusal of original creation. It was the belief that everything that needed to be said was already there, waiting to be picked up. It only had to be put together in new ways to let people see the world in new ways. In 1957, Guy Debord and Osgur Yorn collaborated on a collage book called Memoirs, which brought together the two techniques of dérive and détournement. The book is made up of fragments taken from books, newspapers, magazines, photographs, advertisements, cartoons, comics, and more. Since the Situationist International were the heirs of the Lettres, the mood of the early situationists is encapsulated in the book. It is a remarkably powerful book because you can feel people drifting through their city. You can feel them seeing the city in a new way. The situationists developed other concepts, of which the most significant were unitary urbanism, that is, integrated city creation, or an interest in games played on urban sites, and psychogeography, Play is free and creative activity. Believing that the political had become lost in the repetitive gestures of every day, that lived experience had been transformed into spectacle, desire into consumption, the situationists constructed situations in order to actively recapture and transform everyday life. Through art making and theorizing, they aimed at the subversion of what Guy Debord called the society of the spectacle. In this book, Debord described how capitalist societies complemented the increasing fragmentation of everyday life, including labor, with the nightmarishly false unity of the spectacle, passively consumed by the alienated workers. Debord has said that the spectacle is capital accumulated to such a degree that it becomes an image and that in societies where modern conditions of production prevail, all of life presents itself as an immense accumulation of spectacles. Initially, the Situationist International focused on art making. In 1959, three artists held major exhibitions of their work, including Asger Yorn, whose modifications, or altered paintings, were shown at the Rive Gauche Gallery in Paris. These were second-hand, kitsch paintings by unknown artists which were then overpainted by Yorn as a way of calling the activity of painting into question and the fulfillment of the self as expressed in action painting. In an essay entitled Deturned Painting, he wrote, Be modern. Collectors, museums, if you have old painting, do not despair. Retain your memories, but deturn them so that they correspond with your era. Why reject the old if one can modernize it with a few strokes of the brush? This casts a bit of contemporaneity on your old culture. Be up to date and distinguished at the same time. Painting is over. You might as well finish it off. To turn, long live painting. Whereas Yorn's response to the commodification of art resulted in modifications, Pinot Galizio's response was to create work that could be sold only by the meter. His industrial painting, rolls of canvas up to 145 meters in length, produced mainly by hand but with the aid of painting machines with special resins made by Galizio himself, could be draped along the walls of a gallery or stored in rolls. Theoretically, these industrial paintings could engulf entire cities. Pinogalizio's industrial painting was subversive to the gallery system. Later, in the same year, Constant exhibited a number of his utopian models, part of his ongoing New Babylon project, at the Stedelijk Museum in Amsterdam. Inspired by unitary urbanism, in which the city is seen as a point of departure for new activities such as free play, these models were a plan for a new way of life in the automated world. Constant's work attempted to make connections between a creative urban lifestyle and the environment. Virtually all of his art-making activities were models for thought and recreation of the future. Unitary urbanism means 
that the architecture shouldn't be done without looking to the uh, to the behavior of the man. And so his idea, Constance's idea, is that if we have a man who is playing, who has a lot of time, everybody thought they would have a lot of time because of the uh, industrial possibility. Um, if, if we have a man who is playing, he should have a city where he could live as a playing man. The city should have an image and, uh, uh, and the, the, the structure of, uh, of something uh, that is not uh, fixed that can change quickly, that can be, uh, where you have all the possibilities like making light, rain, cold, warm, everything should be in, in the means of, an, of a man who wants to play. 1962 on, the second loosely structured phase of the Situationist International begins with a shift from art making to films, books, and the journal as the central focus of the movement. Between July 1958 and September 1969, 12 issues of the journal are published and translated into other languages. Composed of articles which were sometimes signed, but more often written collectively and anonymously, the journal was a critique of capitalist culture and urban life, enlivened with images pirated from the mass media. Besides writing, organizing, and editing the Situationist International Journal, Guy Debord directed six films from 1957 to 1978. These films, now removed from distribution by Debord, are mostly unknown to the general public and have rarely been seen outside of France. What's so striking about Debord's films is that they are essentially a, a fabric of citations, both on the soundtrack, which is, consists primarily of phrases, sometimes extended phrases taken from a variety of sources, everything from Marx, Nietzsche, Hegel, to commercials, um, law codes, newspaper articles, etc., combined with images that themselves are also citations from films, from newspapers, from books, from the history of cinema. The Bohr's cinema is strikingly reminiscent of films that an American public would be much more familiar with, given that the Bohr's films were never shown in America, even when they were being screened in France. I'm thinking specifically of the films of someone like Jean-Luc Godard. And this is no accident. Polemically put, I would go so far as to say, Godard learned a vast quantity of what is most interesting in his oeuvre from Du Bois, something which Godard, as far as I know, has never explicitly admitted. But the parallels uh, are striking. The late 60s were politically and socially volatile times in Europe and the United States. Dissatisfaction with the Vietnam War, societal values, and political structures was building, particularly in the university. What exactly the situation has had to do with May 68 has never been completely clear, never been very well understood. Um, May 68 was kicked off by demonstrations, protests, denunciations, outrageous behavior at the um, campus of the University of Paris in Nanterre, Paris suburb. And the people who kicked this off named themselves the Arrangés. They were situations followers. They were fans. They were trying to put the situation's critique, which is incited them, into practice. And people began, as the situationists had fantasized and called for for years, they began to stand up and talk. They occupied their factories, they occupied their schools, they occupied their theaters, they occupied their offices, and they began to talk in small groups or large groups, one person to another. And there was a tremendous discovery of talk. It was a month of noise, and it was lucid noise. Um, the slogans that covered Paris, that spread all across France, and over the next 10, 20 years have spread all across the world, were mostly situationist slogans. They were either copied out of situationist tracts, or they were put up by the situation itself. No matter how long 
some of their essays, no matter how serious many of their tracks were, they always believed that a good critique ought to be able to be boiled down to a single slogan, to a single new caption, new speech balloon stuck on an old comic strip. It ought to be comprehensible immediately to anybody. And that's what happened in May. You can't say the situation has started May 68. You can't say they governed May 68. I think you can say this. Had there never been a situation as international, there never would have been a May 68. In 1969, one more issue of the journal was published. In that same year, the last conference was held in Venice. Further splits followed, and in 1972, the organization was dissolved. For the Situationists, 1968 proved a bitter victory. Originally, I heard about the Situationists when I was at art school, looking for a cause, like every other rebel without one, we basically looked to do something that would make ourselves feel like we could be gigantic posers, show-offs. We felt dreadfully unfashionable as people. And I think that with respect to Guy Debord and the notion that happened in 1968 when those few students in Paris took his ideas, turned them into a reality, made the streets their own, and virtually brought down the government de Gaulle, excited us all over here no end. And we tried in our own way to pay homage by ransacking and sitting in and taking over our own art schools. It didn't last long, but, and the following autumn of 68, we were all left with thinking how we were going to redesign our lives. And it led us ultimately to care about trying to create a lifestyle which we in turn could turn the tables, we in turn could do things that would shift the intelligence. When it became time in the mid-70s to change pop music, when pop fans like Malcolm McLaren and Jamie Reed were disgusted, bored to death with the deadness of pop life, situationist notions of change, of outrage, of excess, were a lot of what drove them to try and create the Sex Pistols. <laughs> central images of anarchy in the UK, the Sex Pistols' first record, maybe their greatest record, is the idea of all of England as a single, ugly, lifeless, empty block of public housing. England, another council tenancy. That is the situation's critique of architecture as the critique of society boiled down to a couple of lines in a song. English artist Jamie Reed who created numerous designs for the Sex Pistols, has created a large collage which he is constantly altering that charts the history of the Sex Pistols. This collage vividly incorporates the Situationist theory of détournement. I was faced with the situation of how to present the Sex Pistols in an art gallery situation. And rather, well, because I had no money, I couldn't frame anything. So I thought, what I'd do is just use the actual gallery the gallery walls and just put everything that I had pertaining to the Sex Pistols and a few other things onto, this, onto the wall. I used a lot of letters and incidental things and it really, if you want to look at it for a long time, it tells the whole story of the Sex Pistols. In the past two decades, there has been widespread diffusion of the situationist ideas about society, art and the relation between the two. The link between art and the social and political was once considered controversial, but now it is increasingly accepted. Contemporary art directed towards social, cultural, and political change can be seen in activist collaborative groups such as Group Material, who detour in works of art, found objects, and advertising to create exhibitions which address relevant themes such as democracy, education, and cultural representation. American artists such as Cindy Sherman, Richard Prince, and Barbara Kruger, deal with issues related to the spectacle, the media, social myths, cultural stereotypes, and strategies of appropriation. Though many artists have absorbed situationist ideas into their art practices without even being aware of situationist texts and artworks, 
Many artists also claim direct situationist influence. These artists vary from Daniel Buren and Mario Mertz to art and language. The Situationist International Project was always a project of communication, an attempt to discover the forms of a new kind of free speech and then to use them. Thank you.